When last we left our heroes, Asmo the Snackman Fighter, Denier the Catman Wizard, Nara the Drow Sorceress, and Wolfgang the Angelic Warlock, they found themselves in the midst of a murder mystery after two students from the Arcane or three students from the Arcane Academy were uh oh sorry. after two students from the Arcane Academy were found butchered and strewn over a tree in the farmlands of Silver Rock. Asmo and Denier set about collecting clues while Nara and Thermian Haslafar took to the streets to hunt the killers themselves. Their searches would yield them uh, more clues, including witness accounts of a nervous, becloaked person discarding things from a wheelbarrow, the further remains, including the skull of Kylan Frosk, a strange discarded potion bottle, the discarded wheelbarrow itself, and most importantly, the only surviving missing student, Gideon Rook, who almost met his fate as Nara attempted to save him from a pack of ravenous rats. I have to bring that up. I did indeed. Uh, Asmo hit another break in the case when the prime suspect, Hans Bergen, was located and arrested by the officers of Silver Rock. With all of the pieces coming together, will our heroes be able to solve this crime and bring the culprit to justice? Denier and Nara, it is uh, making its way towards the evening. Uh, the light in the sky is starting to dim significantly through the uh, significantly overclassed and stormy clouds as you make your way to the Academy for the Arcane with the uh, wounded but stable Gideon Rook. <sighs> Uh, Thermian has Lafar currently cradling him as you guys walk through the uh, gateway into the school itself. And uh, many nervous staffers are currently standing by the doors as uh, they uh, pull them open, trying to give space, but undoubtedly crowding around as you uh, step in t through the threshold of the Arcane Academy. You make your way into the school, uh, many students kind of gathering, like the students that have returned from their breaks, uh, kind of gathering around the uh, hallways, looking down as you find your way to a uh, office space on the first floor, uh, typically used as an infirmary for those that get injured during magical exercises. Uh, it appears for the most part abandoned, uh, aside from the staff ready and waiting to assist in the uh, recovery of young Gideon. Wolfgang, at some point during your day, within the last hour, a notice would have arrived to you while you were filling out paperwork that uh, a surviving student had been found and was being ushered to the Arcane Academy. Would you have found your way there, and would you be waiting? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, Wolf he would have, he, he, uh, did the notice say anything about them like being treated for wounds or anything like that? Uh, as, as you would have arrived at the academy, they would have told you that uh, the information they had received from Thermian as he traveled was that he uh, was, f like, he looked to be, uh, like, pale, possibly sickly, and uh, recovering from some unknown amount of blood loss. So, uh, as you uh, enter into this room... You would see uh, Wolfgang sitting as uh, Thermian, Nara, and Denier enter the room with the young unconscious lad in the Tiger Man's arms. Good work. Nara stays quiet. Thermian silently uh, marches over to one of the beds and lays Gideon down into it. Uh, his body is soaking wet from the rain. Uh, his skin is pale. Uh, this half-elf boy 
uh, with dark hair. Uh, he seems to be breathing rapidly but shallowly as uh, attendants start to go about trying to heal him and fully resuscitate him. Denier is going to pull... Every, with everybody going about their business, Denier is going to pull one of the uh, attendants to the side, and he's going to request that they retrieve him the potion specialist or the potions master of the school and bring them here immediately. A uh, young gnomish woman uh, nods in agreement. Uh, she appears to be a uh, kind of a, a senior student of the school. Uh kind of working in what would seem to be kind of an apprenticeship at this point. Uh, she runs off to go find the potions master who I now have to name. So give me a moment. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Denier would turn towards Wolfgang. So, uh, three missing. Uh, one found. Two dead. Uh, Largely, uh, the main site was to the south of town, the large tree. We managed to find it. We uh, put up a ward to stop sight of it. We have found what looks like to be some kind of a weapon, uh, an axe that has the um, stone knuckle forge icon upon it. Asmo is currently investigating it. Uh, our investigations led us to a nearby farm, which we found a large amount of yumberry wine. We also discovered that a number of tools and items were missing from the farm, including a wheelbarrow, which I suspect was used in the uh, carrying of the dismembered uh, pieces. We have already spoken to the farmer. The, the constabulatory is currently uh, dealing with the Yumberry wine as well as we have collected a laundry list of the last hires of the particular uh, of that particular uh, farm. Asmo is currently investigating that. Uh, I don't know what Asmo has found on the way. When we last parted, I was reaching out to meet up with uh, Nara and Thermian. Asmo was on his way to the Stone Knuckle Forge, I believe, to check out the axe. Uh, hey. He also mentioned something about looking for some people of interest. Correct. Uh, one of the people that... One of the people of interest during the festival, we were given uh, descriptions of them, and we managed to locate one of them. And I suspect that Asmo is currently searching for that particular person at the moment. We know anything about that fuck? Asmo is... Can Asmo th th uh, dramatically walk in at this point? Yeah, honestly, that makes a lot of sense because it's going. you know it's going to take some time for the man you need to interrogate to sober up. So the door swings open and in steps Asmo. Oh, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. Guess what I did today? Asmo has just a bottle of water, but he's swigging it out of the bottle of water like it's booze. It's water, though. Don't worry, this is water I wouldn't drink. I've been running around all day. So, we had a suspect of a, and Asmo sees it. Like, where is the? Is this in the? This is in the. This is in the Kylum, This is in the school, correct? Uh, yes. This, this is, is the, the. This is the Arcane Academy, the one that Denier works at. Uh, as you came in, uh, if you asked, like you know where everybody was, they would have pointed you back towards the infirmary, and yeah, you're in kind of the back hallway of the first floor of that school. Asmo. Kind of walks past you all and just kind of sees. Do I see the injured guy? Yeah, Gideon is currently being uh, attended to by a senior physician of the school. P please tell me that that is someone that we can talk to. That's why you're all here. Uh, the, I heard you came in with somebody. The halfling, this... the halfling man, uh, kind of graying of hair, looks to you. He should wake up in some time. I'm still diagnosing his exact condition. Asma kind of turns to everybody else looking for an answer as well to his question. This That's is... One of the survivors. Gideon. I... Gideon. Well, we know two had died, so looks like there was an attempt on a third, you're saying? 
We found him, uh, he was found in an alleyway nearby, but from what I can tell, he was being held inside of a small hovel in the slums. Held, huh? Interesting. Being held is interesting. Especially considering what I discovered. Two things. Number one, as we kind of pulls out that hatchet in his pocket, found out where how this was distributed. This was a prize hatchet from the axe throwing competition that was given out to people who won. As we're mm. kind of just hits it into a, t is there a table nearby has can hit it into? Just like, tonk. Oh, uh, sure. Just for dramatic effect. And number two, this is why I brought on Earth, because he takes point without even being asked to do. He did a sweep, because based on what we did, based on your research in those rooms, we conveyed that to Earth. And I told him to just do a basic sweep, and guess who we caught in the house? The person's name we got, Denier. And we arrested him, and now he's currently sobering up in the drunk tank. At the sheriff's office. With guards. We got one of the perpetrators. Accused perpetrators. But the fact that the two bodies were chopped up, and it was displayed on his workspace... And the place where he works, according to his work, according to his former bosses, this is all what's been said, and that's all we know now. Now we have someone who isn't dead, so we might be able to get an ID unless they were smart enough to blindfold the motherfucker. This perp, he's surrounded by guards you can trust. As much as you can trust guards. Denier wants to go in and do his sweep to make sure everything's okay. I don't know. I did ask Earf to monitor the situation, so as far as I'm concerned, Earf is at the sheriff's office right now. If he gets, if he somehow manages to get away, we'll be able to find him pretty quick. Mm, no, I don't think he's going to get away, but someone might try and get in and kill him, especially if there's a conspiracy going on. The problem is we found him high as a kite. He didn't hide. He hide himself, if you know what I mean. He got himself all nice and high instead of hiding. And I wonder why. Also, perhaps he was what, meant to be found. What did you see, though, out there when you caught this guy? Tell me. When you found the kid, what else did you see? Nara found him. Uh, we, I was sent out sending messages to all the students. And after a number of hours, I got a I got a response. Thankfully, he was close by in the slums. He wasn't too far away from where the uh, wheelbarrow was tossed, covered in blood. Uh, it looks like there were bits and pieces of the students' uh, bones scattered everywhere. We found him close by a nearby hovel which I'm taking a guess that he was in, and then he somehow stumbled out. I believe there was bits and pieces of rope as well. We did manage to find this, and he holds up the potion bottle. It's... From the look of the bottle, it looks like it's come from a better-off apothecary. Uh, the smell of the of the remnants of the potion gives me a, a lightheadedness, kind of a fluttery feeling. I've called for my potions master to be able to uh, hopefully identify it. Uh, as if on cue, the door opens up, and in steps uh, kind of a rotund uh, earth genasi. Uh, Denier, you would know this man by the name uh, Glib Pringler. Love it. Uh, he steps through. He has kind of a, a twirly, wispy mustache that looks to be uh, a strange combination of hair and dirt, kind of like swirling uh, from its nexus points at the filtrum of his nose. Uh, under his nose, I should say. Uh, he steps through. Ah, what do we have here? Oh my god. To what do I owe the pleasure? Unfortunately, this is a dire circumstance that we require your expertise. Could we have a man as serious as this here? <laughs> He's very serious. What, you gonna judge a man on his voice? God. Not everybody controls how they talk. 
Uh, he ste- he steps into the room. Uh, oh, if anything, I can be of the service, Master we, Veneer. We discovered at the... Some of our students have gone missing. We recently were able to find and rescue one, but nearby we found this bottle, and he will hand over the uh, uh, the corked bottle over to over to uh, Mister uh, Master Pringler. I was hoping that you would be able to identify what substance was inside of this bottle from the initial take I had of it, it caused a lightness of the head, almost a fluttery sensation. I believe that the student may have been drugged with this particular potion. Is it any different from yumberry juice? It's not yumberry juice. Uh, It's an alchemical potion. He pops open the stopper, kind of gives it a whiff as he does the uh, wispy dirt like mustache kind of like twirls and spins a bit uh, gaining a bit of chromatic color as he does oh yes it's uh, going to be hard to identify its true purpose without any of the substance in question but it does appear to have some form of enchanting qualities Given roll. that we, given the the make of the bottle, I would say it probably came from one of the uh, more wealthier apothecaries in town. This doesn't look like something that you would be able to find in the lower sections. It is a it, unique bottle for sure. It is not like the ones we carry here. I wonder if we can track down a glass blower in town. I do you one better. I wonder if my current suspect got high off of this. Couldn't help himself. Hmm. I could provide a list of known potion makers to you. We tend to convene from time to time to discuss the craft. Are any of them in the business of making custom potions off the books? A few would be, yes. Any who lived here before the new regime took over? Fewer, but yes. I'd like that list, please. I will acquire it for you. You have a very poignant way of speaking. It is in my nature. It is a... Uh, you would call it an accent, I believe. I am used to speaking the primordial language of the earth. Mm. He pulls out a uh, small notebook from his back pocket. Uh, It seems to be, like, as he does, like, dirt just sort of, like, encases, like, kind of uh, crumbles onto the ground uh, as he starts flipping through the pages. Uh, and he starts going through his notes to try to acquire that list for you. Wonderful. Additionally, we have one other avenue of approach that we can gather more information from. One of the students that has been uh, taken from us, we managed to recover her skull. I believe that we might be able to beseech the guide to help us gather more information. Perhaps she had information that we do not. It would also be a good way to find out if she had any last requests that she would like to be performed. If we're able to do so, the school would be more than happy to accommodate. She was one of us, after all. I believe 
that be in Nara's purview. Nara shakes her head, looks over. Huh? The guide. We're gonna try and see if we can get him to look at some of the students' remains. Right. See what he can discern out of them. Yeah, we were gonna do that, huh? Um, looks around the room, takes, uh, who all's in standing in that room again? Uh, currently it is you, Thermian, Denier, Wolfgang, Asmo, uh, Wizard Kermit. Yeah, Glib, yeah, Glib Pringler. <laughs> Sir, okay. he has a name. Uh, the, uh, halfling man who is currently attending to the unconscious Gideon Rook. That is everybody in the room, I believe. Aside although from... I although I wouldn't want uh, it to be done here, if any place, I would say we would need to perform it in my dreamatorium upstairs for a bit more privacy. Well, the guide is up with Dedra right now, so then we won't have to go far to acquire his services. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Shall we, yeah. uh, go do that then? We have a lot of stuff to do. We all had a busy day, and the fact that we both encar encountered both of this at the same time is good. I don't know whoever was behind this was planning on us all finding all this this quickly. My biggest question is, my perp... I don't know if his bosses know he went and got high and got his ass caught. And that's very interesting. All the more reason we should get as much information as we can as quickly as possible, right? Mm hmm. Once I get that list from him for potential potion makers, I don't know. Does one of you want to run that up the flagpole? Uh, Glib Pringler at this point uh, rips off a sheet of paper and hands it to you, Asmo. There you are. These are the three that I believe. Fit your. Mm. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to take point on this. Asma just kind of looks over at Denier and Wolfgang. I feel like we're dealing with local businesses. It should be done with a little bit softer hand than the local constabulatory. Especially since I got a perp I got to deal with. You want me right. to do it? Asma just kind of looks at Nara. I can't believe she said that. <laughs> She looks at him, also deer in headlights, like, no, no, I don't want to, I have, I, I have other things to do, but also, like, you know her well enough to know that she looks a little flustered. I ain't saying you can't solve it right now, but you feeling up to it? Basically, it would involve going to each of these apothecaries, finding out if they have the same kind of glass bottles as the one that we have. And if they do, it would be a matter of acquiring the last number of people who they sold these to within the last number of days. We probably don't need the actual bottle for this. We could just get a sketch or something. Mm. Mm. We could do that. I could that pretty fast. I could see if I could send some people out and inquire at one of the shops. Right, I wouldn't want to, uh, I wouldn't want to take the bottle from Master Pringler here until at least he's had a chance to look over it and determine right. if there's a, something inside of it, like a residue or what have you. That's precisely what I was thinking. I will begin running my tests immediately. You have Unlucky. my most sincere gratitude. Unlucky this guy's on our side. <laughs> he bows his head and uh, in kind of like a pig pen cloud of dust vanishes. Oh. Which leaves a dirty silhouette which then filters down onto the ground into a pile of dust. Hmm. So we're going to go talk to the guide, and then I'm going to go find bottles, or is Wolfgang going to send people for bottles, or what are we doing? Here is the list he gives you, by the way. 
It is in uh, the... Asmo's going back to the sheriff. Asmo's going to go uh, head back to where the guy was arrested first before he goes back to the sheriff place. That's that's what Asmo's plan is. All right. Not to um, not not to not 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 to meta game, but yeah, just for safety's sake. Hmm. Peter Popper's Potion Emporium. I heard their potions bleed through the bottles. It's Greasiest one of the easiest potions you've ever drank. It's one of the uh, it's one of the perks. Sometimes you don't even have to drink it; just skin contact. Ugh. Go to Peter's Poppers. Peter, Peter, Peter Popper's. Po I can do the Peter Popper's one. Are you all right? Yes. Asma looks at her. Kind of gives her a look of like hand on the shoulder. Like, are you, are you okay? Like for real? Slow, concrete, like turning of the head. Like a cement mixer. Yes. Yes, I just want to go check on Dedra before I go to Peter Popper's. Okay. Okay. Is anyone gonna come with me to hear what the the bones say? I'd like to. I trust you to relay what you find to us. I need to get other people on some things. Pretty immediately. Asmo, I want you to watch that guy you took in. Oh, I don't trust, trust it. Nor do I. And Thermion, you've got Gideon, right? I will stay here until he awakens. Good. We'll be back very soon. Hmm. She looks concerned at Gideon and then turns and heads out up towards the guide. Very quick pace. You just hear, for, you just hear like under the breath of the uh, halfling, wow, this chest wound is much deeper than the other ones. Panicked, panicked walking, walking faster. All right, uh, so you're heading up to collect uh, Dedra and the guide? Uh, yes. Uh, the hallways have been dispersed a bit. Uh, there's still a few looky-loose students wandering, like, just trying to get a glimpse of stuff, but most have uh, been ushered away back to their dormitories. Uh, as you make your way up to uh, Dedra's room, you find uh, that the pastel color palette of the room itself seems to have shifted significantly since you la uh, left. Uh, all of the paint uh, on at least half of the room kind of uh, emanating out of the corner that Ned, uh, that Dedra had been sitting in, uh, you see it has now been turned to uh, what looks to be kind of a rotting, uh, almost necrotic, creeping blackness of tendrils sweeping out in uh, paint light uh, of the corners uh, that seems to be slowly but surely consuming the room. Uh, it looks to be like half Easter egg, half goth Easter egg. Nara is completely unsurprised by this. Solomon has done similar things to areas in the past, so she's like, "Yeah, this is about right." You know, With I didn't the guy expect. Being involved. You know, I didn't expect somebody to be both a spring and a winter at the same time, but you pull it off nicely. As you enter the room, Dedra looks to you. Her eyes once again widen. Uh, and she wanders over to you and just kind of, like, grabs at your leg. She will, uh, pick her up and, uh, pull the cloak out of her, or the, not the cloak, the skull out of her bag for the guide. Like, holsters child on one side and pulls skull out from other. Ah, you have returned and, oh... You bear another guest. Yeah, double homicide kind of thing. Oh, poor child. He holds out his hand. 
May Mother Death guide you with grace. Wait, we kind of need to talk to them a little. Can you do that? You can do that, right? Of course. Do you wish to do it here, or is there a better place for this? I have Looks a place prepared. Very well. Lead on. Denier will turn and begin to lead away towards the Dreamatorium. Love that name. Did Nara tell anyone who Thermion is yet? No. You have not, you have not stated his identity to anyone yet. Okay. You did whisper something briefly and quickly to Denier. That's right. That's right. The only thing that she told him was, quote, that's the guy or something like that. Yeah, that's the guy. That's your guy. That's the guy. Yep. Uh, you make your way to the staircase. Uh, you grab onto the railing and speak the words that take the, th uh, the four of you upstairs. Uh, Wolfgang, are you with them? You went to go do your own thing, right? Yeah, Wolfgang went to go... Um alert some people to uh, go ask around uh, about the potion shops and uh, uh, basically get people to um, inquire about the potion at these different shops just so he can have people multitasking. Um, also, who has the other end of the, of the sending stone that I have currently? Uh, currently, it the the other end of the sending stone is, uh, unless you give it to somebody specifically, I just have it unattended. And since you gotcha. haven't given it to anybody after the time skip, I have just left it as uh, you have both ends. Gotcha. All right. Well, I will keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, you make your way into Denier's Dreamatorium. Uh, into his private spellcasting sanctum slash classroom. Uh, near the top, like, it, it's it's practically on the top level. Uh, it, you sit under the domed roof of the school. Uh, it's well insulated, but you can still kind of hear the storm uh, brewing outside as rain patters atop the dome, uh, thunder cracking every now and again. My proper sound effect for this one is... Do, do, do. There we go. Uh, as you make it inside, it's it's quiet. The room's slightly colder than usual due to the atmospheric pressure of the storm. And as you get inside, you set Dedra down, and she goes and just finds herself a place to sit amongst all the fluffy pillows. Yes, a nice private sanctum. This should do well. The energies in here are strong. This is my sanctum, the place where I feel strongest and most skilled. Given that this was a student of mine, I wanted to hopefully bring you to a place where you would feel as equally strong. Very well. The one thing that I do ask, no matter what gets asked, the final thing that I request is asked of her is if she has any final requests that she would like to be performed on her behalf. Bear that in mind for yourself. I will simply be a conduit for this endeavor. I will leave the speaking to... What is the poor child's name? Her name was Kylan Frosk. Kylan Frosk. I will leave the speaking to her. To you. When I cast this spell... She will regain her senses, though not as she truly was in life. 
you will be able to ask her five questions, and then she will part from this earth for good. I warn you, while she is in this state, I cannot guarantee what she will feel. Some feel forlorn agony. Some feel bliss. The connection to the other side is different for each who are tethered. Shall I begin the ritual? He glances over towards Nara as though asking of her expertise when it comes to death. Nara, who has kind of been caught up in a few different things that were pulling her attention, is now settling into the reality of this moment and how sacred, I believe, would be the right word this time is. So she she sets Dedra down, takes a big, deep breath in, exhales, looks at Dedra, and doesn't say anything, is just very quiet. Dedra stares at you with her doll-like eyes. A uh, sense of curiosity seems to glint, uh, glint from them. She looks up at Denier and nods. <sighs> the guide exhales and the room grows at no noticeably a few degrees colder. Mm -hmm. The shadows seem to creep in just that little bit more as the energies begin to protrude from him. He speaks a few words under his breath, and the sense of what seems to be kind of a, an herbal incense begins to kind of fill the air this smell of campfire and autumn fills your nostrils leaving you almost slightly lightheaded as the the room seems to take on almost a spinning quality to it come back from the other side there are those who wish to question you Words left unsaid from the young Kylan Frosk. Speak for us, child. Speak of us your mysteries. Grant us your wisdom. Give us your words from beyond. The skull shudders for a moment. The eyes take on this baleful cyan light as the mouth begins to crack and twist. The flesh of the, the extremely dried flesh that still clings to this skull begins to almost tear a little as the mouth yawns open and a baleful inhuman shriek kind of utters forth this <laughs> she will answer you now the mouth wheezes as it opens and closes Denier kneels down before the skull looking at it you have my apologies for calling you back, Kylan. Do you remember where you were before you died? I was with... Uh, I was with... Uh, Aiden and Gideon. We were in a field we had 
We had drunk of the berry. I remember a scream and then a glint and then cold. He glances towards Nara for a moment, as though to read her face. Totally and placid. He turns his attentions back. Did you see the person that killed you? Uh, no. The face. I saw the shine. And then nothing. He glances back over towards uh, Nara. Do you think it was an arrow or a weapon of some kind? It was hard, heavy. It burned and then cold. It's probably the axe, Demir. So they were snuck up on and attacked from behind. She didn't see it. The burning was likely the pain of the initial impact. Where did you get the berry that you drank upon? Uh, Aiden knew people who worked the farm. Uh, they had stored the juice, the wine. We got it from the shed. Who did Aiden know? He he tries to stop, uh, he tries to grab her by the mouth before she can get the words out. It was... <laughs> no, Nara by the mouth, not oh. the skull. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to stop like, Nara what? from using well. the last question. Uh, well. yeah, give me... Alright, I'll, I'll see here. That's hard. Mm. Uh, Dex, I'll say dexter Dex dexterity versus charisma. Charisma? It's talking. What can I say? Like, yeah, it's the best Yikers. I can think of. All right, uh, twelve. Let me... Twelve. Shit. Give me another one, I guess. Because I, I can't just have a tie in this. 15. 10! Okay, you're you're able to stop uh, Nara from speaking the last question. Uh, as uh, she begins uttering words, you, you, you're able to force your hand over her mouth. As soon as Nara's mouth opens, his hand just almost like lightning fast wraps around her mouth to the point that his there's a panicked look in his face and his claws are pressing against her cheek just a little bit absolutely bites the shit out of his finger like whatever is near her teeth is getting bitten like instantaneously uh unarmed strike which is just proficiency plus Strength, I think, as your role. So what would that be? Whatever your proficiency uh, is plus your strength. Proficiency? And then a d20 on top of that. Where is that? Proficiency? Ah, I see. Okay. Might need so to be a custom roll. It will. Uh, 
proficiency in rolling a d20, correct? Uh, if you have no strength stat, then yes. Uh, let me see. Oh, so I would add the strength to the proficiency? Or subtract if your strength is lower. My strength is... Oh, God. Oh, it's it's there. Okay, it would be beep beep. <laughs> 20. Uh, Denier, does a modified 20 hit you? It hits me. My AC is currently 14. Uh, then your hand takes... Uh, Nara, what, what is your strength stat? Uh, it is 2. Your hand takes 2 damage. Arcane Ward absorbs. Nara, you bite into what feels like kind of a... like it, It's like a pocket of air around his hand. It seems to crackle and fizzle a little bit as you bite. So... She, she has kind of a... a her her face registers oh that's denier it was just like gut reaction if anything gets near her mouth unexpected uninvited it will be chomped and uh registers that it's denier realizes that he would stopping her and just stares at him very quietly with his hand still over her mouth he turns his attention to the skull kylan frosk what are your last requests of the school of this school of the arcane? My mother and sister. They. I wish to say goodbye to my mother and sister. They. They are alone. I will bring your words to your mother and your sister, my student. As you utter those words, this, the lights within the eyes begin to flicker out as the mouth once again goes slack and the flesh on the body begins to turn just that much paler and begins to uh, desiccate just that much more. <laughs> and the uh, smell of the campfire in autumn slowly begins to dip, uh, dissipate. Your heads begin to spin a little bit less. The shadows begin to... Uh, recede along the walls and the skull is inert as the skull goes inert he removes his hand you have my apologies I noticed that she took my question to you as a question I could not allow her final request to go unheeded Nara has a very cold expression. And just stares. Shall I take this remain to the graveyard? There's nobody that I would trust more than you. Please. Ensure that she is taken care of and that she is sent properly to the other side. Nara's, Nara's eyes slide to the side to make eye contact with the guide and she nods. He bows his head in reverence, lifts up the head with both hands. Then I shall make my way there and I shall provide her a proper resting place. Should you acquire more of her remains, I will see that they are rejoined to her. If we are able to find Aiden as well, I will bring him to you. And I will see that he is thusly taken care of. He looks down to young Dedra. As for you, I believe we shall meet again. Until then, 
continue to look inward, young one. Perhaps you will find more answers to the questions you don't know you have. And he begins to float out of the room. Little Dedra, as he uh, floats away, just kind of like gives that little up and down wave of the hand. In what way? Just kind of up and down, just like a, a very, like, r almost a robotic, like, child wave. Ah, okay. What was the question you were about to ask, Nara? Any more information would have been helpful. You're very soft when it comes to them. I am. They mean a great deal to me. They are important to me. And I've spent enough time up north to know the importance of having your final requests taken care of. The information that you seek, we can acquire from Gideon. But that, we couldn't get from him. Her I eyes mean, shoot open again. There, man. What I him? didn't have enough time to explain, but he is the one you're looking for. The six fingers I saw. I suspected, uh, I suspected as much given the description that I was told. I suspected it may have been him. Additionally, I saw him grab that man by the throat. There's a lot more strength behind him than first thought. Well, we should get back before Gideon wakes up. I... In my attempts to save him from a pack of rats, I may have had to use a weapon, and it may have also hit him. That would explain the large gash across his chest. Wouldn't it, Jess? We should go. <laughs> Nara just walks out with Dedra. All right. Meanwhile, Wolfgang, uh, you have made your way back out onto the city streets. Uh, nighttime is approaching. The uh, lantern lighters are currently making their way through the streets. Uh, it's a lot harder while it's raining, but they're getting the job done, lighting each of the uh, street lights along the main thoroughfare, working their way down to Low Town. By the time you make it uh, closer to the Kylum Diaboli, the, the whole main square uh, around that building, which also seems to uh, take up the uh, function of a town hall, has already been lit. Including the uh, beacon atop the building itself. As I get uh, closer to the Kylan the Ebola, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and I'm going to try and see if I can find Talia anywhere. Uh, you make your way into the building. And uh, you 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 check Talia's office first, and sure enough, you find her there. Where is my ambiance for? There we go. Uh, you find her sitting. Uh, at a desk, like, kind of going through notes, looking through profiles. Uh, she has some student profiles kind of opened and on her desk. She looks up. Oh, um, I was looking through the s 
students that I was thinking of taking into that program you mentioned. Uh, I haven't come up with my final report yet, if that's what you're here for. It's not. This can... That can wait. I need your expertise for a matter. Your speed and your discretion as well. I... You can trust in both of those. She closes the folders on her desk and kind of like stacks them into a... Uh, tidier pile as she uh, closes the book she was writing in as well after laying down a ribbon to mark her place. And there's been a series of murders. I had heard rumblings. I wasn't going to get involved unless asked. Sorcerers. Children. Hmm. What would you have me do? We've got a few leads. I can't look into all of them at once, and I think speed is our best option here to get all of our ground covered before something else happens. We've got a survivor. We've got people looking over him now, making sure nothing happens to him. We've got a suspect of a sort. I don't know. Asma found him out of his mind on some substance. Belligerent. Uncooperative. I'm not sure what that lead's gonna turn up, but... I'm pretty suspect of it. But right now, we've got this. Um, and I will, if uh, taking the option to acquire a quick sketch of the bottles, uh, that uh, the bottle that we saw that contained the residue of that potion, He'll hand it to her. A bottle? Yeah. Uh, she asks. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. Apparently this was found uh, near the perp. And we're trying to figure out where these leads connect to. We've got three possible leads on this. Nara's going to look at the Peter Popper's Potion Emporium in the slums. I'm going to try to see if I can hit Clyburn's Whimsy. Or, I'm going to see if I can try to hit uh, Cherry Weather's Apothecary in Uptown. I need you to go to Midtown and go to Clyburn's Whimsy and inquire about this potion. If it's I a unique bottle, apparently. If I were to wager a bet, I'd say most of these have probably closed down by this hour. But I can find my way inside, and I can find the owner of the shop, if that's what you desire. Yeah. I'll see what I can gather. She takes the sketch. Don't hurt anyone. Not unless I they... I need to find... I won't hurt anyone unless they force my hand. I need to find what that bottle contained and who it was sold to. It would be easier with the bottle itself, but I'll see what I that's, can do. That's being looked at by Denier's Potion Master. They're trying to see if they can pull any sort of residue from it, try to find out what was in it that way, but finding out who it was sold to is our top priority. I'll make my way to Clyburn's Whimsy. Good. She uh, walks to the corner of the room and picks up a uh, dark gray cloak, starts to wrap it around her, clasps it around her neck, and throws the hood over. I'll report back with anything I find. If it's late, is it okay if I pay your home a visit? Sure. Uh, she snuffs out uh, she snuffs out the one burning candle that was on her desk uh, kind of in one of those like little lantern holders and opens the door for you he 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 swallows sort of a, a, shiv, a chivalrous impulse and he walks out of the door first uh, walks out the door after you and locks the door behind her and she starts making her way towards the entrance of the Kylum. Sort of rubs the back of his head. Basically just asks somebody to break into a potion shop. 
and, he and, exhales. And, poten and potentially the owner's house. Mm. He exhales, and then he goes looking around for uh, Pogan. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to ask anybody to do it, it may as well be the person you asked to head up your own secret police. Yep. Yep. Probably. The, uh, the Anbu is on it. Oh, shit. Not the Anbu, capital A? Uh, you make your way back to uh, Pogan's office, which is uh, very well furnished. Uh, there's a lot of uh, marble and, you know, gilded accoutrement, uh, lots of sun imagery. Oh. Uh, his fireplace is currently burning. You can see through the frosted glass window on his door. Uh, the uh, It's kind of bespeckled with, like, glittering gold dust that seems to shimmer as the uh, fire dances in the fireplace on the other side. So you know he's in there. He'll knock on the door a few times just with the back of his hand. Hey, come on in. He slowly opens the door and closes it behind him. About time for supper, I su Ah, I... Sorry. Lord Connolly. Hello. Hello, Master Pogan. Lord Connolly. What do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Well... He says, kind of like uh, adjusting glasses that were on his nose back up to his eyes. There's a matter I was wondering if I could use your help. Or if not, maybe you knew a student who would be able to help. I am ever a faithful servant to the Kylum, sir. Hmm. There's been a string of murders. Child sorcerers. Cruel devilry. Aye. We've got a suspect, but I don't necessarily trust in that source. There's there's something strange about this, Pogan. Do you think yourself or one of your clerics or paladins with the Zone of Truth can meet Asmo down at the jailhouse? Well, many of our best graduates, uh, if they don't go on to work, the Kylum specifically, those that don't tend to join up with the constabulary or go off to be adventurers themselves, he, I believe he has a few of our graduates under his employ already, some of which I tutored myself. But if you wanted extra hands, I could come up with a list. That would be great. I'd prefer to get this matter sorted quickly and efficient. Most important, correctly. Of course, sir. I could, uh, head over myself if, uh, that'd be amenable. If you've got time. I warn you, sir. If he is, in fact, guilty of these crimes, I might not be able to stop myself from stomping his nutsack into jelly. You'll have to beat me to the punch. You mean the kick? Right. Well, tell my aide that uh, I'm making my way to the constabulatory. Tell him to bring my supper there. Will do. And Pogan. Aye, sir. Thank you. He looks down, then looks back to make eye contact with you. Of course, sir. He gives him a brief nod. He goes to grab his white cloak uh, with gilded trim. Beset with a badge of the Kylum Diaboli. Hell yeah, brother. And then he makes his way to the fireplace where, uh, it's kind of a low fireplace, that being that he's a dwarf. It's actually kind of dug into the foundation a little bit. Uh, so the mantle is kind of at hip level for you, but just above his head for him. 
He raises up and picks up his hammer from the uh, mantle and slings it across his uh, onto the holster on his back. I'll find my way there. And mm. he uh, pulls a lever on the fire, like he uh, kind of pulls a lever on the fireplace, and it begins to kind of cinder out. And he makes before his you way go. To, uh, he starts making his way to the door, and then you say that, "Hey, got something for you." And he'll fish into his pocket, and he'll pull out the other end of the sending stone. Just if in anything case. happens, if anything happens, you can message me with this. I'll be there in a heartbeat. I'll keep it close by. And he puts it in his breast pocket. Right. And he begins to tromp his way out of the uh, Kylum uh, after locking his office door. And with that, I'm going to head to Cheery Weather's Apothecary. All right. You make your way back out onto the streets, part ways with Pogan, and walk into the stormy night of Silver Rock. And here is where we will take a quick break. Hey, guys. Lanny here. I just wanted to thank you for rolling with us. And if you wanted to catch us live, you can do so almost every Monday at 5 o'clock Central Time over on twitch.tv slash Lanny Pator. Now, back to the show. Asmo. You Asmo has made his way uh, to where Earth notified him where, like, the guy was arrested. The, whole house, the building in particular. All right. There's still... Uh... Let's see, who did I mention was? Oh, this isn't derailing your plans right no. now. Uh, there's, st there's still an officer standing outside. Uh, he uh, notices you as you approach. He, he's got his cloak drawn over his head while it's raining, but you can see by his colors and by his badge that he is one of yours. Uh, he notices you, and he stands at attention and gives you a salute as you walk up. I mean, all right, no problem, trooper. Do I know who this guy is? Not by name. He's, he's like, you, you don't know every single member of the rank and file. Do we refer to them as officers or guardsmen? What would you refer to them as? Like, you can call all them right. either. All right. Guardsmen. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he, 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 calm down, calm down. I'm just here to ask a couple quick questions here. Of course, Were you sir. present for when the uh, suspect was arrested? Uh, I was, sir. All right, how many people were in the building when that happened? Uh, there were, uh, there was the owner, and hmm. then there were uh, one dozen patrons hmm. and the suspect himself. Where's the owner? The owner is still inside, sir. Oh, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Asmo walks in. Uh, inside, uh, the uh, guardsman will let you know that uh, the owner lives in kind of a shanty apartment upstairs, but he has not left okay. the premises as far as the uh, the guardsman is aware. Asmo's going to walk in. What's the place look like? How run down? Uh, very shabby. It looks like this place maybe at one point might have been a uh, kind of like a uh, a lounge of sorts but uh, clearly there are a lot of deteriorated areas uh, it, in fact it might have at some point been some type of like a hospital or an infirmary because you're noticing that the way this place is built there are like kind of segmented off areas where you might be able to hang a curtain uh, but there are like kind of half standing walls in between chunks of this uh, area behind the countertop, behind the uh, front facing countertop when you walk in. Uh, inside, the place smells heavily of uh, various burnt chemicals, some 
incense that are probably burnt to try to cover up the other chemical smells, but it really does a poor job. Uh, you also get a, like various hints of mildew and uh, old, kind of a like a, a old sweetness of rot and old wood. I was going to head upstairs to uh, the place he was erected to and knock on the door. Yep. Uh, there's a staircase kind of uh, old shabby steel staircase that sits ne- uh, behind the front counter. Uh, as you walk up it, there's a old, very uh, tattered wooden door that sits uh, atop the stairway. As you knock on it, you hear some shuffling inside. Uh, you can see kind of the flickering of lantern light within. Uh, how is it? Uh, Asmo just knocks again. Fuck, you're As- running out loud. I've answered all your questions. As he opens the door, you see uh, a gray-haired human patron. Uh, the, the gray-haired human uh, owner of this establishment kind of has that horseshoe balding pattern up yep. top, but his hair is kind of frizzed out to the sides. His eyes are very dilated, and he's wearing uh, very like very much kind of like a plain uh, white work shirt that is stained and uh, hempen pants. I. Okay. I, oh, sh- uh, I don't think you've answered any of my questions. So. Uh, I, I, you're you're the uh, you're the sheriff boss. here. Yeah, yeah, I'm the boss. I, I decided but... to swing by here in the middle of what I'm doing here to ask you a couple quick questions, and I think you can make my job a little less stressful, and then your life will be a little less stressful, wouldn't you say? I I, I could do with less stress. Yeah, we all could. Mind if I, you know, invite me in to sit down and have a conversation, or am I going to stand here? Uh, Sure, please. Uh, He kind of lifts the door a little bit because it kind of drags on the ground as he opens it a bit further in. Uh, Inside, you see uh, it's it's not horribly decorated for what he has. Uh, There appears to be like a round table in the middle of this room with... Uh, cushions on the floor. The table is very low set. Uh, some colorful curtains kind of hang around the area, and uh, a lantern like chandelier hangs at the center of the room, swinging on an uh, old, what looks to be kind of pocked silver chain. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a curtain that. Uh, in the back of the room that seems to lead to uh, further into this apartment and uh, a uh, heavy wooden door close to the entrance uh, off to the side wall. Can I get you some uh, water or anything to drink? No. Uh, No, it's raining hard enough. I just walked and opened my mouth up. (laughs) I so as well just kind of stand, just leans against the door more or less. Now the door is closed. I just as well doesn't sit down necessarily, but just like leans against the, the door. If you'd so, like to sit, you can see sitting at the uh, uh, center of the uh, wooden table there appears to be a uh, kind of an elegant looking hookah with a uh, cinder burning up top it. By all means, have a seat. Uh, I'm uh, I'm working, so I can't partake. Asmo kind of says in a way which he may or may not actually even use, but he's especially not using right. while he's at work. And he goes and he sits down at the table. Mm. Kind of Asmo will sit down as legs. well. Asmo will sit down as well. Uh, now, I had a very interesting person in your establishment, so I got a couple of questions I need to ask you for clarity's sake and you know if you're able to answer these questions then you won't probably see me again I don't like to give away too much information on my clients the, mm. the nature of my how business about, how about this how about this how about you consider me a client as well 
Oh. Abby. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Because right now I currently have in my in a locked cell a man who is accused of murdering two people. And after he was done murdering, he ended up in your workplace, in your establishment. Now that puts a lot of stress on you. And I'd like to just get some detailed information from you, really. And that's about it. I sh sure, I don't really ask names of the people that come in, but could you describe the guy? You don't remember the guy that my guardsman walked out of here with? You don't remember him? Uh, there was a lot of chaos going on. I, 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 I think I remember uh, kind of bald-ish, uh, the, the eye patch guy, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite a looker he is. What time did he show up at your workplace? Uh, he'd be in... in uh, Oh, you can, you can, see, you, can see, you can see him very, uh, you can see him searching his memory, like as let hard me as give he you, can. Let me give you another question then, if it's easier. What time do you remember seeing him here in your workplace, if that's a bet? I, he had been here since dusk at least. Dusk at the least. Maybe earlier. Uh, I don't know, sometimes the light doesn't come through the window very good some days. Mm, that's true. So, now tell me, who was he hanging out with, and how many people? Well, how many people was he hanging out with when he was enjoying the, and as well just gestures, the services of this place? Uh, he's not exactly a chatty one. He comes in, it, he usually s sticks to himself. Most of my clients do. Was he sticking to himself this day, from what you can remember? Uh, from what I recall. Uh, most of the time that people come in, I don't ask questions. They either, you know, pick up products and use it, or mm. they bring their own and pay me for the space. Well, let me ask you this question, then. Asmo reaches into his, uh, into his breast pocket real quick and pulls out the picture of the three. Aside from him, he taps on the, like, the face of our suspect. The other two. Did you see them at all yesterday? Uh, Take a good look and really search your memory on this one. Uh, They'd be wearing the same out. They might be wearing the same outfit he was wearing. Shorter than him as well. I don't recall either of these guys. You don't recall either of them. No, and it's that one's got a pretty distinct face. He points to the uh, short red hair, like the man with the short red hair and the scar from ear to the left side of his jaw. I'd remember a scar like that. Yeah, they're quite a quite a group of lookers, aren't they? <sighs> Did he bring his own pro? Now here's a question. You said people bring in their own product and people uh, sometimes acquire it from you. Now, I don't think you want the digging too much into that second thing you just said right now and that is not a threat it's a simple obligation of my job so well, of course it's i don't not want a threat to... your guys already took most of what i had he mm. winces as he says he winces after he says that <laughs> oh. so tell me are you on something right now are you off something right now <sighs> he gestures at the hookah May I? <laughs> Ain't nothing stopping you. He takes a drag from it, and he seems to calm down a little bit. How many times have you had this guy in your workplace before? That Pointing guy? Pointing to the suspect? Mm -hmm. He's been showing up uh, probably every few days for the last, I don't know, two or three moons. Okay. Did he purchase, or did he bring his own? Uh, yesterday... I think he brought his own. But he had purchased from me previous. I don't know if it was the same stuff. What did he purchase from you? Opium. Okay. No. Because he came into here and brought his own stuff. Was the stuff he brought in opium? 
Could you tell, based on how high he was? I don't usually ask, but most people mm. tend to have a preference. This preference is opium, huh? Yeah. I... I was just kind of staring at him. He nervously takes another drag, and as he inhales, his hand steadies a little bit. He exhales a long, steamy plume of smoke. <sighs> I kind of got you up against a wall in this one here. So, you say you don't normally pay attention. You don't normally ask questions. In this business, That's discretion is usually key. preferred. I'm aware. I'm aware of discretion being key. But right now, we currently have a magical, a person of magical ability in the hospital. They are being held captive for, for an amount of time we do not know. However, two people are dead. And their bodies butchered and chopped up into pieces. I already told you guys I ain't had nothing to do with that. No. I don't think you did. You work here all the time. You monitor this place, right? Yeah. This guy's been coming in for three months. Purchasing his own supply. Give or take, yeah. What did he ever say to you? In passing. Anything. Mm. I really need you to think about this because this gentleman went and stressed you out. Stressed and threw off your whole place's vibe by bringing his bullshit to the door. So as much as you don't want to say too much, this guy just effed on you. So as far as I'm concerned, you should be willing to give this guy up because at most he's never coming back. He... Uh... He rubs his head for a moment, and then his and then he opens his eyes. Most people walking through here, they they don't really like to tell you your, their life story, no. uh, especially guys like this. But sometimes mm -hmm. when they imbibe, they go into a bit of a stupor, and mm -hmm. especially on stuff as hard as what he was doing. When they drift out, sometimes they just kind of absently talk. And this guy, he uh, he uh, he tended to mutter a, a name when he was out. Did he now? Asmo leans in. This is what was the name he muttered? Uh, Delilah. Delilah. He would mutter that a lot. And Usually, he kind of start crying. Mm. Did he say it was a family member, loved one? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, he, okay. That's all he'd say, and as I said, it doesn't exactly pay to ask questions that bring up painful memories in my business. Mm. Delilah. Interesting. So you've never seen any one of the other two names ever come in? Those two pictures there? Not, never seen any one of them? Um, not as clients, and not that I recall, anyway. Not as clients? And Do you mean you don't recall at all? That I, you've never seen them, or you have seen them? Well, like I said, they got pretty distinct faces. Uh, I don't... Mm -hmm. I don't go out too much unless it's to you know resupply myself or pick up loaves you know a loaf of bread for me to eat maybe some cheese if things are going well but okay. I don't uh, I mean I might have seen one of these guys on the streets but I, I I don't really recall what was when this gentleman entered into your workplace your establishment were you at the front door working the door I usually am, yeah. What was his demeanor walking in? He seemed like a stoic. You know, one of them uh, mm -hmm. strong, silent types. How strong was he that night? Well, most nights when anybody hits the opium, they ain't that strong, you know. 
But when he walked in, was last... he already hot? When he walked in, was he already high, or had that not happened yet? He didn't look like he had been high when he came in. Uh, he. Uh... And you'd know. Asmo just kind of gives him a. You'd know if he was too. You seen it? I mean, it's pretty easy to tell sometimes. Some people now, carry it better than others, but this guy, when he's on it, he's on it. Honey, did you see the drugs he brought in with him? I uh, keeps it in his satchel, but okay. Uh, above now, silly question: uh, Was the satchel also acquired by Earth? Yeah, yeah, you guys got his stuff. Uh, one of the guardsmen that was walking with you with him okay. was holding all of the stuff that he had with him. Okay. It was taken in for processing. Okay. So this guy's been coming here for three months. Last night, uh, your best recollection, he came in around dusk. And he spent all night here, based on your knowledge? Give or take, yeah. Is that normally when he shows up? Uh, yeah, I mean, he usually shows up at the end of the day. Okay. If and he when. Didn't bring... How many times has he brought in Yumberry wine with him? Uh, you can smell it on the breath sometimes, but I don't know if he's ever brought any with him. This person in question is implicated in butchering two children and spreading their bodies for all to see at his workplace. Asma looks right at him when he says that. And based on the timeline of what you're telling me, after he that, actually, I have an extra question for you here. Night of the festival. Busy time here, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, you'd say so. Yeah. Well, a lot of people tend to imbibe more during a holiday. If anything, that's the time you should cut loose, right? I guess. Was he there that night? He squints his eyes and focuses for a moment. This big, tall dude. With his stoic uh, demeanor. I... Was he? We had a pretty packed house, but I, I, I don't think he was there that night, no. He wasn't there that night. Okay. Going full L.A. Noir on this. <laughs> Do you uh, fuck kids, Valdez? <laughs> Are you fucking insane? <laughs> I fucking... I saw that clip and I'm like, I gotta play this game, man. It's this a is... great game. Uh, uh, no. Nah. So, your supplies, and I'm not talking about the opium. How many drugs do you sell here? I mean, your guy's got a catalog of what I got. Usually it's, you know. I'm asking you, though, because you might not have everything you used to have. You ever deal with young berry juice of any kind? Every now they... and again, but that's more of like a rich person's get off, you know? It's hard for me to get. How much does it go for, usually? On the street? Mm. Guy, you'd be lucky to find it for a hundred gold a bottle. Ain't none of my patrons doing that. Hundred gold a bottle. Okay. You guys You're crack down. Like you, asthma, guys, you guys asthma, crack asthma down grabs... on it hard. Asmo grabs a... Is there, like, a basic bottle on the table? Uh, like a wine bottle? Yeah, you can find one of yeah. those. So, like, one of these full of young berry juice is 100 gold, you're saying, yeah? On the street, yeah. You guys crack down hard on that stuff. Best we can. You know, when it comes to imbibing certain things, it's a person's, person's personal decision, but when it comes to how it affects other people, that's when it becomes a problem, which is why... That's what gestures at a den like this. This is better than doing it on the street. Just is. It may sound strange for me to be sitting here, a police officer, uh, officer of the local constabulatory, 
not giving you grief on this is because I want some information. If I had five drums of yumberry wine, five giant drums of yumberry wine, I'm talking Asmo just like literally does a pantomime of the size of the ones he saw in that. Yeah, the like the casks, the three gallon the casks. casks. Yeah, three gallons, at least a couple of gallons each. Five of them. How much would that go for? Oh. More than this place is worth, that's for sure. Interesting. Interesting. And this gentleman, you said he brought his own drugs. You ever see him bring in Yumberry wine? Like I said, I... I may have smelled it on his breath once or twice. Uh, it's, it's a rare smell, but you know it when you Sorry, smell it. it. But mm. I, I don't know if he's ever brought it in with him. Okay. Yeah. Did he ever come in with anybody, or was it always just himself? Uh, he tended to be a loner. Okay. Does that mean he had his own special room he would go into? My guys, they don't got rooms. He had a cot that he preferred, but... It, you know, it's first come, first serve. Okay. Well. Hmm. And the name was Delilah, correct? Yeah, that was the one that he kept muttering. It may seem small, but you might have just helped me. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, if this guy did that stuff that you said, I... I, I don't condone that shit. Look, I'm I'm just trying to, uh, you know, make people feel better. You don't, you don't have to explain the difference between facilitating drug use and murder. Right. They're different crimes. That's for like he, nods, like they're different crimes. He, ta he <laughs> takes he takes another long drag of his uh, hookah. Here's what I'm gonna get you to do for me. Here's what I'm gonna get you to do for me. You're going to continue on doing as you do. If anyone aside from me comes to you asking questions about him, you are to contact me as soon as you can. Can we agree to that? Uh, yeah. If anybody else comes around asking about him, I, I talk to you. Uh... You don't tell him. You talk to me. Okay. Don't do that. You did not speak to me about this, but if anyone comes around asking about him, I need you to make a good description of who that might be. Okay? He nods. As for all this, we have a lot of issues right now, and as far as I'm concerned, this is not the most precedented one. As we kind of closes up his notepad. Thank you for answering these questions, and I would advise laying low for a couple days. Okay. I don't know what that would be for you, but, you know, do that. He takes another long drag of his hookah. His eyes dilate slightly more. Right. Also, one last request. When you're working the door, try not to be high. He ponders for a moment. Because next time I come asking questions, I really hope you'll be able to remember more. Right. And I know. And as what taps it, this might make it a challenge. So at least for the next couple of weeks, keep it to off hours if you can. To keep your head clear. To help out your local town. He nods. I usually oh, try to. Asmo's going to get up from the chair, going to push it in, go to the door, and ask one more quick question as he's about to get to the door. He's like, let me he, shake your hand. He gets off. He gets up and kind of, like, stumbles. Uh, it wasn't really a chair that you were sitting on. It, it was kind of like a an old cushion, like a, yeah. a really big plush pillow that you were sitting on Perfect. by the table. And he gonna... uh, stumbles to his feet and kind of uh, wobbly follows you to the door. Asmo's going to quickly shake his hand. Just... He reaches out and gives you uh, a slightly limp handshake, but you can tell he's trying to put some force into it. Mm. Last thing. 
How often, in general, with all your attendance, do you hear anti-magic sentiments? Uh, anti-magic? I mean... The new regime here in town. One question I didn't ask you was, were you set up before with the old guard, or is this a new setup? I mean, this place didn't become like it was until the former guy, he uh, kind of ran a lot of this place into the ground. Uh, I mean, I, I think what's going on here lately has been an improvement, but uh, some people, they, uh, you know, they, they yearn for the older days, but I don't think they yearn for the old guy, you know what I mean? That I do. And, uh, hey, as I was going to walk through the door and be about ready to close it and go, the, uh, you said some people say that and yearn for the, like, kind of the old way. Anyone of note that I would find interesting? I mean, nobody that ain't already a little crazy and, you know, oh. cracked. Humor me. There's, uh... Shiver and Charlie, he's, uh, he's always cracking about various theories and conspiracies and stuff. Uh, I mean, he's, he's got this whole thing about him where he thinks that, you know, the sorcerers are going to take over the world. Uh, says, says he ate a mushroom once that made him, made him see it all. That, like, you know, they were all monsters and they was coming for us and they were going to burn everything to the ground. I see. Shiver and Charlie's a regular here. Yeah, he, he wanders the streets a lot, but when he comes into enough money, he comes in and does his stuff. You ever say what he does for work? I don't think a dude like that can hold down work, you know? I mm. think he just panhandles and gets what he can. I don't know. Guy gives me the creeps sometimes. Uh, I, I don't question where the money comes from, though. I just make sure mm. it's real. When was the last time you saw Shiver and Charlie? He was in, uh, maybe a week ago. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep an eye out for Shiver and Charlie. I'd love to hear what he has to say. Uh, good luck getting anything that makes sense out of him. Gonna need a, uh. gonna need a number of chemicals on that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. And what was your name? Uh... The guys around here call me Higgs. Well, Higgs. We'll meet again. Have yourself a good night. You too. Asmo's gonna leave and he's gonna head out the uh, door. He's gonna head out the front door. But before he goes, how many people are inside the place right now that he can see? Uh, the place has been basically abandoned due to the fact that your guys basically yeah. ran through and needed to catalog everything and make sure the uh, area was clear. So it's just you when you walk downstairs. All right. Uh, Asma's going to go out and turn to the guardsman. Thank you. Also, uh, no longer need to guard this place. I'm going to send someone here to monitor the place to see who comes and goes. Uh, should I wait for their arrival, sir? Tell you what. Find yourself a vantage point and keep an eye on this place. And just be mindful of anyone who goes in and out, and especially. And Asma pulls out the, the pictures if they look like these two. Yes, sir. Uh... Try your best, guardsman. Yes, sir. All right, and Asma's going to head out. And Asma's going to start heading towards the Sheriff Constabulary. All right. Uh, meanwhile, Wolfgang, you find your... Excuse me. Uh, you find yourself outside... You said you were going to Cherry Weathers, right? Yeah, I was going to the one in Uptown. Yeah, you find yourself outside of Cherry Weathers Apothecary. It's not too far from the uh, Kylum Diaboli. Uh, it's... it's kind of between the Kylum Diaboli and the thoroughfare where uh, Loxley's Tavern and Adventurer's Guild sits. Uh, 
you can see that the shop itself, uh, in this uh, very well put together uh, uh, like th this this entire street is lined with storefronts that uh, like are each kind of divided by a wall from each other like you know kind of like a duplex triplex setup uh, very light bricked uh, exterior fine wooden doors with uh, ornate handles and uh, out front of this one sits the uh, green and red uh, sign with wonderful calligraphed uh, pearl colored words that reads Cherry Weathers Apothecary. The window, uh, the sign on the inside of the window reads closed, uh, but above the shop itself, there does appear to be an apartment with some uh, flame light glowing in the window. Well, Wolfgang will uh, adjust his outfit and he will knock on the door. Uh, you knock on the storefront door? Oh, I was I wasn't aware there were two. Uh, yeah the uh, the apartment the apartment sits above, but uh, like the the only front facing door of this uh, building does appear to be the storefront. So you knock on the storefront door. Uh, there is a balcony up top with a uh, lovely uh, bit of greenery kind of drifting off beneath its railings, which you could get to should you decide. But knocking on the <laughs> storefront door, go ahead and give me. Uh, let's see, over the sound of the thunder, an athletics check, just to see how loud your knocking is. Athletics. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, oh, it didn't go through, did it? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Darn. Let me roll on my sheet then if my go dice are being finicky the go dice have stopped fuck now they're stuck oh, dice shit. yeah fuck you too roll 20 <laughs> tens on both sides amazing uh yeah, your knocking does not seem to be uh, getting the attention you need. Hmm. Uh, could I? Uh, so there's there's clearly like a there there's like a. You said there's like a balcony. And I can see candlelight on the inside. Uh, firelight, yes. Uh, there's firelight. a balcony up there, and there's uh, windows that you can see on the apartment uh, above, beneath the uh, slate shale uh, tiles that make up the roof. Well, I'm going to take a coin out of my pouch. I'm going to cast light on it, so it will begin to glow brightly. And I will toss it up into the air a couple of times, uh, making sure that the light catches on whatever windows may be on that upper balcony. All right. You flick the coin into the air, and the bright light uh, seems to glint in the window. You do it again a few moments later. Then you do it again a few moments after that. Uh, give me a... What would this be? Uh, you're trying to gain attention. Let's go with performance. Performance? Yeah. All right. That is also a five. So Let's see. If we can get that performance going. Let's see. Show me big oh, it's numbers. Coming. Oh, it's coming. Oh, Fuck you too, roll 20. 
Well, you managed to beat the threshold either way. A few moments hey. later, uh, you hear the creaking of uh, the balcony open as a uh, curious halfling's face kind of peers out, uh, kind of cherry, uh, cherry blonde hair, uh, and a very well uh, kept. Uh, waxed mustache and pointed beard beneath his chin a uh, pair of circular glasses at the uh, top of his nose uh, he appears to be holding uh, in one hand the uh, leg of a small bird that has been finely roasted he looks outside what the devil was that uh. Wolfgang just looks up, uh, hands on his hips. Could a weary traveler find solace in your house away from the store? He adjusts his glasses and looks down. Uh, we're closed for the... He opens his eyes. Oh! Oh! Uh, yeah, I, I hold up the coin that illuminates my face. <laughs> uh, Lord, Lord Connolly! Uh, yes, one moment! Uh, one moment, please! And he uh, scrambles inside... Uh, you see the uh, light of a small flame begin to uh, emanate at the very back of the shop. Uh, Soon you see a few more lights begin to kind of flicker on uh, as he passes them, and then he makes it to the door, and you see him just kind of scrambling to unlock it. Uh, Please, please, uh, come in, come in! Uh, As soon as he unlocks it, he'll, he'll step inside and he'll press to digitate himself to, to dry his clothes so he doesn't drip all over his nice floor. Dreadful weather we've been having today. To what do I owe the pleasure, sir? Aye, certainly it has, and though I wish I could be visiting you on more uh, better terms, I am here on somewhat official business. Oh, uh, well, any, anything I can do to help the City of Silver Rock would be my honor. Of course, of course. Uh, if there's a way we could uh, sit down and have a little chat, I was wondering if your discerning eye could help me identify a few things. Yes, yes, please, please. Uh, my uh, uh, desk is back this way. And he uh, leads you back to... Uh, well, the back of the shop. Uh, you're walking through. This place is very well put together. The uh, shelves are very, uh, n- like, nicely lined. Uh, each section seems to be color-coordinated uh, with various types of potions, uh, each with stoppers in bottles lined on shelves uh, that are encased in glass behind lock and key. And he uh, takes you to the back where uh, behind the uh, counter itself sits uh, what appears to be uh, a shelf with very ornate bottles uh, behind anything it. Like, anything at all like what I saw earlier? Oh, like what I much down. nicer than that bottle. That thing is... Like th- these things were blown by artisan gr- like glass blowers. That thing that you had was like kind of a a conical Dude, gla- cube. Glass <laughs> blowing is magic. It's like artificing. It's like fucking insane. Yeah, the potions behind the counter uh, in the special display are each glowing unique colors. Some of them have different bobbles of color, like floating within them like a psychedelic lava lamp. I guess all lava lamps are a little psychedelic, but you know what I mean. Uh, he spins a like the head of a stool behind the counter, and he hops up to uh, kind of sit at eye level and motions to a similarly heighted chair uh, for you. Uh, please, please, uh, we can get down to business here. And he uh, lights another torch, uh, and lights another lantern by the uh, desk that you're sitting at. I'll stand if that's all right. It, as you will, sir. It's... Good power play. Love it. I was wondering if you'd be able to help me identify something. See, there's this potion bottle. 
We're having trouble identifying. We were wondering if maybe it passed your store at some. Uh, if... And I will, I will unfurl a a uh, sketch of the uh, a bottle in question. Yeah. Don't have the bottle in question. This appears to be of. Uh, we have a few potions that we might keep in bottles like this. Uh, Is it a specific sort of potion that would go in a bottle like this? Well, in this shop, I would usually keep. Uh, Really depends. It's, um, something in the mid-range price point for me here. Uh, I would keep various types of, uh, drafts that would, how would you say, enhance the physical or mental acuity of a person, uh, perhaps make them... Uh, better speakers, uh, but mm. I mean they're, they're rather unremarkable. This particular bottle, mm. and so without the bottle itself, I cannot tell you its origin. I'm afraid. Well, would that I could. The bottle is currently being looked at by a uh, a potion maker of some renown. Which one? Uh, one that, uh, Master Arcanist Denier has under his employ at the, uh, Sorcerer School. Oh, Pringler. Yes, he's an interesting one, though a bit of a dullard in conversation. N no offense to the school at all. He is very knowledgeable of his craft, but hmm. glasswork is... Probably not his point of expertise. Indeed, it's not. That's why I am here. He's currently trying to see if he can glean any information on the residue that may be left over from inside the bottle. You see, sir, and I hate to be the bearer of unfortunate tidings, but there have been a few murders. Mm. Oh, dear. And you believe this potion to be responsible? I, I, I do not sell any potions that can be used to harm those no, that imbibe them. No, not, not quite. We're simply trying to connect some strings here, sir. I see. So in your professional opinion, you would place a potion that enhances an ability in one of these? I personally would bottle them that way, yes, but that goes between shop to shop. It's easier to categorize when you are the one managing them, and it's harder for somebody to swap out one potion for another that way. As you can see, the ones behind me are clearly distinctly bottled. Hmm. As are the ones on each of the shelves around you. I bottle them based on what I would charge them. That way, whoever is working the register would know what to charge them when they come up for inspection. Oh, you've got employees, then? Of course. I wouldn't work this place myself all day, every day. I'm not mad. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> he says, sort of, with a far-off glean in his eye. So, hmm. but if in your, in your opinion, you haven't seen a bottle like this in your store, at least not recent. Well, uh, he hops down off of his stool and he walks over uh, to. Uh, kind of a, a display near the middle of the shop and he takes out a key and uh, unlocks it uh, uh, unlocks the display swings open the glass door 
I mean, as I said, he, he pulls out a bottle. Uh, clearly on the label of the bottle, there is one that uh, looks to be that of an owl, and he hands it to you. Uh, and it looks similar to the type of bottle that you uh, handed over to Glib Pringler. What hmm. little you were able, like what little time you had to actually identify the bottle and he hands so, you another one that uh, has a picture of a bear on it, or the embroiderment ooh. of a bear on it. Like it's I said, branding. these ones, uh, you know, they're useful for those who wish to demonstrate better ability. Uh, in fact, uh, let's see here. Uh, you can keep that one on the house. He points to the one with the owl on it that you're currently holding and examining. Hmm. Just as a sample of our craft. I will kindly accept. Thank you. All right. So you have a potion of enhanced ability, Owl's Wisdom. And the original, the original okay. bottle, the one that we found at the scene, that has some sort of relief of an animal on it as well? Nope. Just a no. straight-up square bottle. Square. Well, bottle. conical square. You know what I mean. Mm. Mm. What else can I ask you? So, these bottles, do they come from you directly from a glass blower in Silver Rock somewhere, or are they imported? There are certain, there are certain artisanal glass blowers that we work with here in the shop, yes. Uh, these particular Could you ones... Name them for me? Uh, certainly. Uh, these ones, they would come from... Uh, he gives you the name that I am totally not coming up with right now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, Kirk, know what you're talking about, Mott. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these particular ones, we, we typically buy wholesale from Torvins. Torvins. For the more intricate ones, we usually have to go with uh, those of Elven Craft, or half Elven Craft. Elven Craft hasn't been around for a long time. Hmm. Not in these parts, anyway. I understand. Orvin, correct? Yes. They own a shop in Midtown. If you're looking specifically for them. I went there myself the first time to inspect the first batch that they came up with and since then have been delegating the task of Picking up more to my assistance. You know, there's another shop that sells potions in Midtown. Uh, Clyburn's Whimsy. Aye, yes, they uh, aren't as high quality as the ones we brew here, but if they were, perhaps they'd be in a better part of town. Hmm. <laughs> Could I uh, incite that a little? Sure. Yeah, I just want to see if there's any sort of underlying animosity in that statement if he's just being a douche. Uh, insight. Insight. Oh, that is a 19. Little of column A, little of column B. Mm -hmm. He's clearly very prideful in what he's been able to put together and what he's been able to do. 
though he does seem threatened by what Clyburn has been able to pull together from what resources Clyborn has or Clyburn has. Hmm. Hmm. I guess that part isn't implicit, though there is, yeah, some uh, definite need for him to try to bolster himself against Clyburn's craftsmanship is what you're gleaning. In terms of pricing, this bottle you just handed, how much would that usually go for? Put me on the fucking spot, why don't you? Don't make me make up a price, God damn it! I'm bad at this. <laughs> Just say fairly expensive. Mm, I... He lists a price that would be higher than a price that you would normally go for for something like this. Hmm. And with your discerning opinion, surely a uh, ample businessman such as yourself would have his thumb to the pulse on these sorts of things. If you were to go to a shop such as Clyburn's, do you think the price range would be around the uh, average worker, you would say? Well... Around here, you pay for quality. What he deems his potions to be worth, I'd say you're getting about the right price. Hmm. All right, well, I think I've exhausted this line of questioning. Uh, just a few more things, if you don't mind. Uh, how many employees do you have? Mm, at present, I... Well, we'll be letting go of a few now that the... busier festival season is over, but I think I'll be keeping on about three. One... Three. Yes, one apprentice to whom I am... trying to help learn the craft and one to assist me in acquiring materials and of course restocking and supplying the shelves and one to help run the shop should the days come when I am unwilling to run it myself hmm if you wouldn't mind could you get me their names and also a list of their homes just in case well, our other leads don't come up with any I want to be thorough on this I can have the list and addresses uh, the list of names and addresses to your office by the morning if that is alright with you that would be most kind of you sir of course anything to help the city hmm I will duly note that. Well, I shouldn't waste any more of your time. It's never a waste, sir. It's always a, a very proud moment for me to be able to uh, assist in the duties that you find yourself encumbered with. But I do have a pheasant getting cold upstairs, he says as he's reaching for the <laughs> lantern. Right. I'll get out of your hair. 
If there's anything else I can do to help, please feel free to send word. And remember, if you're looking for quality potions, you can always find them at Cherry Weathers Apothecary. I'll be sure to tell all my friends and neighbors, sir. Thank you kindly for your time. Of course. And he sees you out. As soon as he walks out, he immediately just deflates. (laughs) Funny. Same with Cherry Weather. (laughs) Uh, You see the lights in the shop begin to go out one by one and until only the light in the apartment is left. Uh, How late is it at this point? Uh, While it's impossible to see the night sky at the moment uh, you're you're well past dusk gotcha all right so it's not like terrible late yeah no i mean down the street you can still see that loxley's tavern is still kicking well wolfgang will then uh head back to the mage college all righty uh denier nara what is it that you guys were heading off to do um, Nara would have headed to Peter Popper's Potion Emporium after checking in with Thermian and Gideon. So Thermian and Gideon first. Uh, on your way out, you would have popped your head in. Uh, the halfling who was overseeing uh, Gideon's recovery uh, is currently getting everything set down uh Gideon is breathing much more stably now and uh you would have kind of caught the door as the halfling uh was leaving oh, uh, the boy just needs to rest now he should be fine but sleep is required uh Thermian kind of catches your eye as you uh, walk in, as you darken the doorway. He uh, looks at you for a moment and then looks back to uh, the boy and just kind of like nods his uh, chin to his chest and closes his eyes. Huh. All right. Nara is still kind of coming off of the whole uh, guide experience, so she's placid enough to not be panicky about things, and uh, goes on to leave for the Peter Poppins. Peter Poppers Potion Emporium. Uh, and how Good about board. you, Denier? Uh With him, uh, given that he's asleep and he's not going to be up for a little bit, Denier is currently uh, short-resting to uh, arcane recovery spell slots so that he can take Thermion into uh, Gideon's dreams to uh, gather information about the scene via his dreams. I didn't realize you gained spell slots back on a short rest. Uh, I can only gain a small number of them for a short rest. Gotcha. Let me pull up my sheet now. Uh, where is it? That doesn't help very much. I, I'm t- I, I take your word for it. I trust you. All right. Uh, Nara, it takes you a little bit of time to get back out into the slums at this point in time. Uh, the The streets are dark, like very dark, but your eyes have no problem see- peering through them. Uh to you, it, to you, you may as well be walking around in the middle of the day. What do the slums look like? Like, what is the general feel as she's walking through the streets of the slums? There's a slight tingle about you. Not that you necessarily feel in danger per se, but you do feel as though, uh, like... As opposed to just walking around the normal streets, you you have this sense of alertness about you, uh, more so than you do walking the normal midtown or uptown streets. You have this uh, sense of like kind of a danger sense about you. 
Uh, every now and again, you glance out of your eyes, somebody kind of like slinking through an alleyway. Uh, you definitely feel as though there are eyes on you, but... Uh, I mean, she's wearing a wedding dress covered in sapphires. Kind of hard to not stare. Yeah, you you definitely look extremely out of place. Although, uh, would you put on a cloak in this weather? Or would you just kind of like walk around just getting drenched with the rain? Uh, she'd probably cloak it for the most part, but not like really trying to hide. Just enough to kind of cover your head so you're not just getting completely spattered with rain, I get ya. Yeah. Uh, sure enough, yeah, you, like, you, you definitely look out of place, and there are definitely a lot of eyes on you, either peering out of windows or, uh, looking up at you, um, every now and again you hear a scuffle breaking out, uh, you see, like, two men fighting in an alleyway, uh, the breaking of glass, one of them lacerates the other. Casually watches as if it's another day. That's yeah. You just casually watch as one man falls to the ground and starts bleeding to death, uh, and the other man grabs some small parcel off of him and runs off. Oh, he's like dying. Maybe. Ah, shit. <laughs> man. Nara is annoyed that she saw it because now she knows that if Wolfgang finds out that she saw it and did nothing then she'll have to hear him talk about it for more than probably like 10 seconds which is awful so she'll go over and make sure he's not like dying dying uh, you see him clutching at the side of his neck and there is a large pool of blood full, uh, kind of pooling beneath his head. <laughs> he looks up as you, at you as his eyes are uh, slowly succumbing to the blood loss. Uh, she pours a potion in his mouth. <gasps> Thank you. Merciful Death Angel. Queen of the Ma. Queen Death Ma. And he goes mm. to sleep. Sounds cool. Hmm, maybe I should add death in there. Keeps wandering down the alley. Uh, you make your way down, and I want you to give me a uh, survival check. Oh, 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 oh. This is uh, navigating city streets. Yeah, uh, one moment. Survival, you said? Yes. Six. <laughs> it comes to your mind that while you were given an address for this place, you don't know the names of any of these streets. You don't know the cross streets. You don't really even know where you are. The only times you've come down here, you've been guided or have been uh, beckoned. Um... Okay. Is the pointed cockerel anywhere nearby? Where you are presently? Yeah. Does not appear to be. And with that survival check, you're not really sure where it is relative to where you are. How many people are nearby? Perception check. Twenty-two. Twenty-two, sure enough, you see uh, a number of, uh, of vagrants kind of laying about. Uh, the man who ran off with that parcel is currently uh, hiding in an adjacent alley. Uh, not really aware of you, is currently digging through the parcel he just acquired. Uh, but he seems to be the most alert person out of all of the people that you see. Can I stealth up on him? Sure. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Let's see if it works. It probably won't. 
but then it might. 18. Yeah, he's far too distracted by his prize. She's gonna, like, watch what the parcel is that he wanted to, like, kill this dude over. Uh, it appears, like, he's just kind of peering down into this, uh, kind of small burlap bag, maybe about the size, like, something that you'd maybe be able to fit, like, a couple of rats in. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, what's inside? What's, uh, what's, what's in there? Yeah, he's, you, you get close enough that you can kind of, like, peer over his shoulder, uh, as he's looking down into it, he reaches his hand in and pulls out, uh, some, uh, just kind of like a, a, a like a pinch of glistening white powder that he kind of takes to his mouth and starts to breathe in. Whoa, whoa there, hi. Ah! Ah! He's mine. <laughs> he closes the bag. <laughs> he closes the bag and clutches it to his chest. It's mine. It's mine. I got it fair. I got it fair. Yeah, by killing that guy. Yeah, fair and square. <laughs> what is it? He's, he's go away, dust. Go away, dust? Yeah. Yeah, you breathe it in and then you don't go to be here no more. Wait for, like, how long? Oh, as long as your mind will take you. Oh. Oh. Okay. I know what that's about, I think. Um, so before you do that, um, which, yeah. I don't need to tell you that. Um, where's Peter P Peter Poppins Potion Emporium? Peter Poppins Potions? Yeah, that one. Uh, I, I could maybe show you if, if you leave me with my go away dust. Uh, sure. I don't want your dust, so. Good, because you ain't getting it. <laughs> if I wanted it, I could take it, and there'd be not a thing you could do. So you should show me where I'm supposed to go. He reaches down to his waist and, like, grabs at the handle of an old rusted knife. You ain't taking it. <laughs> she pulls out Tango Muerte. Trust me, if we were going to fight, you would lose immediately. He looks ve He looks deathly serious at you. Like, he's willing to die over this bag. She suddenly drops the, like, fun. I told you I don't want your dust. I want to find Peter Poppins. Whatever the potion thing is. Well, I'm not sure I trust you no more. I don't want your dust. Just show me where it is. Give me a persuasion check. Uh, 20. You promise you'll leave me alone? Why am I gonna bother you over dust? He knows exactly why you'd bother him over dust, you can see on his face. But on her face, she's like, why is this a big deal? I have so many drugs in my bag. He doesn't know that. He only yeah, knows but... how great go away dust is. Right, of course. Okay. This way. And he leads you through the streets. Uh, every now and again, like, you come across, like, another group of vagrants that would look up, usually kind of, like, maybe standing around, uh, like, a, the, a fire being set, um, like, in an old steel barrel. He will uh, clutch the bag under an arm to try to hide it. Uh, most of them will... Look at him for a moment, but then look at you with their eyes glistening in the firelight. None of them seem to act on anything, just staring at you as a curiosity. Uh, about five minutes pass as you walk through the twisting and turning streets of this rat's nest of a uh, part of the city. And he points at a... Uh, old hanging iron sign that's completely rusted over all you can see on the sign is parts of the paint that make out the letter p uh the sign appears to be in like relatively triangular in shape uh with kind of a gooseneck on top 
roughly the shape of a potion bottle. There he is. Right there. I'm gonna go that way now, and don't you follow me! He grabs at the knife on his belt again. Use go away, Dust. I'm gonna. No, no, why? What? Why? Why what? Why do you use it? Because it's... It's better than being here. Why? He looks around as it like he looks around and just kind of like holds his hand out like are you seeing the same place I am? She, she almost like how would I explain this? If he were has any emotional awareness, he would be able to tell that this was just nothing compared to the things that she has experienced. This is all I've known, and it's all I'll ever know. I leave here, I'm nothing, I'm spit on, I'm pissed on, I'm kicked at, and I get shit right back down here. But with this, this I get to leave. Chew, what would you need to not want that? His eyes just kind of like go blank for a moment like this is a like a, a thought that's never occurred to him to actually think like a what is better than go away dust what what would that what would that mean to him I don't even know I, I... I'd need I'd need land just a mm. place where, where nobody could hurt me. What's your name? Yaga. Yaga? It's what my ma called me before she... You know. Oh. I'm Nara. I'm very good at granting wishes. Oh, oh I've heard of the people like you. The, the ones under the city. Yes. Very powerful. <laughs> I'm the queen of the Ma. I have been called by many. You make the deals and... But I thought you only came for those who had the, the special blood. Mm. You know, them thems that does magics. Without really I'm meaning to... Different than them. I am... Um... My own type of thing. That's why I am the queen. And she could grant me wish. And then the places that the go away dust takes me, I could be there forever? In a way, I can change everything. What do I need to do? Hmm. Would you want something like that? I was once looked down upon, treated poorly. What if, under the Queen of the Ma, you were respected? Treated well, had no need to, uh... What if things were fair and right? You can uh, make it happen. I've made many things happen. What would, what would I need to do? 
Hmm. Where do you stay? Where do you live? Wherever is safest. Is there an inn? Oh, I can't afford none like that. How much does it cost? It depends on the place, but I mean, I usually ain't got the coppers to rub together even. How many people are around them right now? Uh, I'll let that previous perception just, uh, roll. Uh, up and down these alleys, there's there's maybe seven or eight vagrants. Uh, you don't know how many people are in the buildings around you, but... I will give you a safe place for the night. She'll pull out a couple copper and very, like, deftly stick it into his hand and clasp his hand. How many copper exactly? Um, let's say how much would uh, an inn normally cost? Uh, a normal inn that you might go to probably be about like you know, like mid-level, maybe ten silver to a gold for a night. In that area? In this area? <laughs> you, you've been to slums before. You tended not to sleep in them. Got it. Usually when you were on missions for Solomon, you would, uh, like, if you ever had to go to, like, a larger city, uh, you'd sleep on a rooftop, or if the weather was poor, you'd find uh, space underground or, you know, just hide in somebody's attic somewhere. You, you've never really paid to sleep somewhere. Hmm. But around here, at your best guess, uh, based on what they were charging at the inns, like, based on what uh, they were charging for ale and stuff like that, you'd guess that this guy would be able to find a cot somewhere for, like, five copper. She will give him 15. <gasps> All for nothing? Hmm. I want you to wait one day and think of all the things that you would want to not want what we were discussing. Wait one day. Try to, instead of disappearing, use your mind to think of what you would want in your life. What you're good at. And then I want you to come to the city and find me. Okay. And if you cannot leave a message... At the Kylum. That's a fancy building in the middle, right? It is. Mm. Where is the inn? I want to make sure that you make it there alive. Oh, it's been a while since I stayed in one. I think there was a sleep place this way. And he motions down the street a little. Uh, do you follow him? I will follow him while marking where the potion shop is. Okay. Uh, you cut across one alley and... Uh, she will down... float on uh, the pixie stick just for not having, not wanting to walk in this moment. All right. Roll me one intimidation check while you do so. Okay. 24. Uh, the alley that you cut through, there appeared to be a gang of ruffians kind of standing at one end. They notice the guy with the bag and think they have an easy mark. But as you float around the corner, they look up and they get scared as shit and just kind of like scatter off. 
and uh, down the next street a ways, uh, find a place with a lantern outside that's still lit, and he goes inside. And he finds a place to sleep for the night. It's a bit of a hovel, kind of like a... It's, it's essentially like a hostel set up. Mm, it's like a communal okay. sleeping room with, like, bunks. But he has a place that's inside. Now remember, Yager. You can have a completely different life. Right. Don't let me find you killing anyone in the streets again. If you need things, come to me for them. And if you give me any bits of information, I wouldn't say no. Wow, he actually rolled really well on this. Mm. In his clenched hand, he thrusts the bag towards you. Whoa. You, you can keep your promise. If I don't go and be here no more. If I can have respect and protection. He just rolled a nat 20 on a wisdom save. Oh my god. Oh no. Okay. His she hand is looks... shaking as he's holding the bag towards you. She will... Look a bit surprised. And from his perspective, he will see a confused surprise face turn into an unexpectedly warm, prideful smile that even she wasn't expecting. You can see his hand quivering as if he's, like, using all of his strength not to pull it, snap it back to his chest. She places both hands over his while also taking the top of the bag. Yager. I think you and I have both come from very bad places. But that does not mean we have to live there. Okay. Okay. And his fingers quiver as slowly one after the other they begin to unclench from the bag. But you can tell he's like really forcing himself to. Um, she will turn to the person taking money at the front desk or if there is such a front desk, or whoever's behind the bar. I don't know how this place is laid out. You guys are still kind of outside, uh, but inside there is uh, a very weathered-looking... Like, he's one of those young men that looks old, you know? Like, he's got creases on his face, and... Uh, it has clearly seen some shit. Uh, his beard is kind of patchy and scraggly. Come on. It's three copper for the cut. Nara looks around the room. How many people are in there? Uh, it's dark, but I won't make you roll a persuasion roll. There's probably, or sorry, a perception roll. Uh, it's probably, uh, between, like, there are, like, partitions kind of hanging in the room, but there's, uh, maybe, like, 20 or 30 bunks kind of stacked wall to wall. Uh, maybe about 70% of them are filled. Wow, okay. Wow, all right. 70% of them are filled, and there are how many? Uh, total beds, probably about 60. Uh, 
a major a, a, a large majority of them are filled. Okay. But there's okay. Now my be head is doing math. Sixty beds. Seventy percent of sixty beds is about. <laughs> Are you trying to calculate how much it would cost to get the rest of those beds filled? Absolutely. If you toss this guy uh, two silver, it would probably be enough. Based on the rate he was charging. Honestly, probably one silver. Okay. Pay up the guys a month. Um, as Yager is going to pay... She stays his hand, gives him a look, a bit of that, like, warm smile she gave, and and looks at the, the guy behind the counter. You staying too? I want to buy the rest of the open beds for the night for whoever needs them. And she puts a silver on the counter. All right. Give me an insight check. Oh my god, not one. Damn. He takes the silver coin. You got it. I'll go find people to fill them. He just kind of shrugs. Uh, gives a look to uh, Yager to kind of study his face of this, th his reaction to what she just did. He looks up at you. Uh, it seems as though this man believes he has actually found some deity. Okay. All right. Kind of. At the very least, a saint. I know I didn't give you much, but you're going to keep that and feed yourself. Take care of yourself. Understood? Yeah. Yeah. He nods. Like, rapidly. Now, I think I've just paid for a few beds. Why don't you help me go find people to put them in? Put in them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he steps back out into the streets. And as you and he go to find people who are in need of a bed for the night. Nara doing good. Bringing good into the world. Where once she brought death and destruction. Here is where we will end tonight's session.